Hi everyone, this is Eden and today I will introduce our work on sublinear time computation in the presence of online erasures. This is joint work with Sofia Rasholnikova at Boston University and Nitin Barma at Chennai Mathematical Institute. Initiate the study of sublinear time algorithms that compute in the presence of an online adversary. A sublinear time algorithm is a randomized algorithm that has query access to some very large data set via an oracle. Here is a depiction of a data set and an analyst that has Oracle access to this data set. We represent the data set via function f that takes examples to their label. The analyst runs an algorithm which makes queries to the function f and outputs some approximate answer about this function. The number of queries made by the algorithm should be sublinear in the size of the input function. The online adversary you consider is the following. After answering each query to the dataset, the oracle or the adversary can hide a small number of entries from the analyst. In the next few slides, I will formally define both the adversarial model we consider as well as the tasks we consider within this model. Let's start by defining the adversarial model, which we call the online erasures model. It is parameterized by a natural number t. After answering each query of the algorithm, the adversarial oracle can erase up to t entries from the input function. I'll demonstrate the model for the case when t equals to 1. Before the algorithm makes any queries, all entries of the function are non-erased. Suppose the algorithm's first query is entry 2. Then the oracle first has to answer this query by returning f of 2. After answering the query of the algorithm, the oracle can now erase one entry of the function. Suppose it chooses to erase entry 3, then the value f of 3 will be hidden from the algorithm for the remainder of its running time. If at some point the algorithm queries entry 3, then it will receive a special symbol perp. The process just described is then repeated for all queries of the algorithm. In this model, we also assume that the oracle knows the description of the algorithm, but it does not have access to the random coins of the algorithm. We consider the following motivating scenarios for studying this adversarial model. The first scenario considers the case when individuals request that their data be removed for a data set, as enabled, for example, by EU General Data Protection Regulation. In particular, such requests can be adaptive to the algorithm's queries, as individuals can be prompted to restrict access to their data after noticing an inquiry into their or others' data. Another scenario is that of a criminal investigation or fraud detection setting. A criminal could react by erasing their data after some of their records are pulled by the authorities. Finally, in a legal setting, when an organization is served a subpoena, it is legally bound to answer the query. However, afterwards they can destroy related evidence that was not involved in the subpoena. Notice that in all of these scenarios, the erasures happen after the algorithm receives an answer to its query, which is compatible with our modeling choice. In this work, we consider property testing tasks, which are a special case of sublinear time algorithms. Property testing was first introduced by Rubin Felsudan and Goldray Goldwasseron. In this uh, model, the algorithm is given a par parameter epsilon between 0 and 1. And its goal is to determine whether f has a specified property or if it is epsilon far from the property. By epsilon far, we mean that f must be modified in at least epsilon fraction of its domain to have the property. Then the tester is supposed to accept if f has the specified property and reject with high probability if f is epsilon far from such property. Since we are in a sublinear regime, we want a tester that makes a sublinear number of queries in the size of the input. Notice that in this model, we assume perfect access to f, which means that for every query x, the algorithm will receive the true value f of x. Other property testing models have been studying where this assumption does not hold. Parnas, Ron, and Rubinfeldt initiated the study of tolerant property testing, where a fraction of the values of f could be corrupted. And Dick Schiller, Ashornikova, Takurta, and Varma studied erasure resilient property testing. In this model, a fraction of the values of f have been erased. However, the erasures happen before the algorithm makes any of its queries. For this reason, we will refer to the model of Dick Schiller as the model of offline erasures. 
we study property testing when erasures to the function f happen online as the algorithm is making its queries. The goal of an epsilon online erasure resilient tester is the same as that of a standard tester. It's supposed to accept if the function has the specified property and reject with high probability if it is epsilon far from the property. The only difference being that the access to the function is via the online adversarial oracle. These are our results at a high level. We show that some properties can be tested with the same query complexity in the online erasures model as in the standard model, namely linearity and quadraticity. And here we're comparing query complexity for a constant erasure budget t. Then for linearity, we show matching upper and lower bounds in terms of the erasure budget t. On the other hand, we show that some properties are impossible to test in our model even when t is equal to 1, namely sortedness of arrays. As we will see, the structure of the violation to the property plays an important role in determining testability. The plan for the rest of this talk is to first introduce our linearity tester with a sketch of the analysis, and then introduce the main idea for our lower bound on linearity testing, introduce just one idea from our quadraticity tester and its analysis, and conclude with our result on the possibility of testing sortedness. Let's jump into linearity testing. We consider functions which are Boolean valued and whose domain are bit strings of length d. Such a function is linear if f of x can be written as the sum of the bits xi for some subset s of the bits. Equivalently, a function is linear if f of x plus f of y is equal to f of x plus y for all x and y in the domain. Linearity testing has been widely studied due to its connections with probabilistically checkable proofs and hardness of approximation results. In the standard property testing model, linearity testing can be done with 1 over epsilon queries. The tester was first introduced by Bloom, Luby, Rubinfeld, and its analysis was later improved by Bellar, Coppersmith, Hashtag, Kiwi, and Sudan. In our model, we show that linearity testing can be done with log t over epsilon queries, where t is the number of erasures per query that can be made by the adversary. The tester of Bloom, Luby, and Rubinfeld is very simple. It repeats the following procedure. It samples x and y from the domain, then it queries f of x, f of y, and f of x plus y, and it rejects if f of x plus f of y does not equal f of x plus y, since this cannot happen for a linear function. In this case, we say that the pair x, y violates linearity. The analysis of the tester relies on the following crucial result. If a function f is epsilon far from linear, then an epsilon fraction of the pairs x, y will violate linearity. It's very easy to see that the BLR tester will break in the presence of online erasures. The tester could query x and y and receive their values. However, once the oracle answers with f of y, it can erase x plus y. And thus the tester would never see a violation to linearity. As a result, we will introduce a new linearity tester which works in the presence of online erasures. Its analysis will rely on the following structural theorem. If a function is epsilon far from linear, then for all even k, an epsilon fraction of the k-tuples x1, x2 through xk violate linearity, by which we mean that f of x1 plus f of x2 up to f of xk does not equal the value of f on the sum x1 plus x2 up to xk. Notice that the theorem of Bellar et al. is a special case of our structural theorem for when k is equal to 2. The proof of our structural theorem follows via Fourier analysis and uses similar ideas as the proof of the theorem of Bellar et al. Our online erasure resilient linearity tester is as follows. At first, the tester queries 2 log t over epsilon points, xi, which are sampled uniformly and independently at random from the domain. And recall that t is the number of erasures per query. The tester then repeats the following 1 over epsilon times. It samples an unempty set i of q of even size. Then it queries f as the sum of the points xi for the indices in the set capital I and it rejects if the sum of the points f of xi does not equal the value of f on the sum of the xi's, and all relevant values in this calculation are non-erased. If after one over epsilon repetitions of this procedure, the tester doesn't catch a violation, it will then accept. 
Let's demonstrate the tester for the case when t equals to 2. Suppose the tester for score is a point x1, then another point x2. Now the oracle can erase x1 plus x2, which we represent by an edge between the two points. Next, the oracle queries another point x3 sampled from the domain, and the oracle can erase x2 plus x3 and x1 plus x3. Then again, the tester queries a point x4, and the oracle erases two potential sums, x3 plus x4 and x2 plus x4. Now the tester can query sums between the reserve of points, and it can query either x1 plus x4, in which case it would be uh, lucky to query a non-erased point, or it could also query the sum x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4, which would also be non-erased. Following is a sketch of the analysis of the tester. Note that the tester always accepts if f is linear, so we'll suppose now that the function f is epsilon far from linear. In this case, the goal of the tester is to obtain non-erased all values of some k-tuple that violates linearity and the sum of the points in this k-tuple. Notice that the points in step 1 are queried uniformly and independently at random, so if the size of the domain is large enough, then the points are non-erased with high probability when queried. So from now on, we assume that the points queried in step 1 are non-erased. And we analyze the probability that the tester rejects in step 2. The number of even-sized subsets with entries in the set Q are 2 to the Q minus 1, which after replacing for the value of Q equals T squared over 2 epsilon squared. Now the tester cares about finding a violating tuple, and by the structural theorem, the expected number of violating tuples of even size is an epsilon fraction of the even sized tuples. So epsilon times 2 to the q minus 1, which equals t squared over 2 epsilon by our previous calculation. The number of violating sums that can be erased by the adversary is t times the number of queries made by the algorithm. The algorithm makes q plus 1 over epsilon queries, so the number of erasures by the adversary is upper bounded by t times q plus 1 over epsilon, which after replacing for the value of q and some calculations is upper bounded by 3t log t over epsilon. Now notice that the number of sums that are erased by the adversary is much smaller than the expected number of violating tuples. So we can show that the expected fraction of non-erased violating sums is at least epsilon over 2. And after 1 over epsilon iterations, the tester will sample a non-erased violating sum and reject with high probability. That concludes the analysis of our linearity tester. Next, we will talk about our lower bound for linearity testing. We show that every online erasure resilient linearity tester must make at least log t queries. And this matches our upper bound for linearity testing in terms of dependence on t. The proof idea is as follows. Suppose the tester has access to a function f where access is via an online adversarial oracle. The oracle uses the following strategy. After answering each query of the tester, it erases t sums of previous queries of the tester. If the tester makes q queries where q is strictly less than log t, then with t erasures, the oracle can erase at least 2q, 2 to the q points, which means that the oracle can erase all sums of the points queried by the tester. And the tester only sees linearly independent vectors from 0, 1 to the d. So the tester will be able to see the value of f on points like x1, x2, x3, which are linearly independent, but it would not be able to see the value of f in, on a point like x1 plus x2, since that will have been erased by the oracle. A partial function, which is defined only on linearly independent vectors, can be extended to be either linear or far from linear. So the tester cannot distinguish between the two cases if it makes less than log t queries. This proof can be made formal via Yao's minimax principle, which is adapted to our setting. Yao's minimax principle is a very common technique for proving lower bounds in property testing. And that concludes our discussion on the linearity lower bound. Next, we discuss some ideas from our quadraticity tester. 
Consider again Boolean valued functions defined on the bit strings. Such a function is quadratic if it can be expressed as a polynomial of degree at most 2. For example, the function f of x equals to x1 times x2 plus x3 is a quadratic function. Quadraticity testing has also been widely studied for the same reasons as linearity testing. In the standard model, Alon, Kaufman, Krivelovich, Litzin, and Ron showed that quadraticity can be tested with one over epsilon queries. In the online erasures model, we show that quadraticity can be tested with one over epsilon queries when t is constant. The query complexity it has doubly exponential dependence in t for this tester. The tester of Alon et al. repeats the following procedure. It samples three points, x, y, z, uniformly at random from the domain. Then it queries the value of f on their pairwise sums and on the sum of the three points, x plus y plus z. We will then reject if the sum of the values of f on the seven points is one, since this cannot happen for a quadratic function. We can represent the queries of the tester via a triangle pictorially. The points x, y, z are the vertices of the triangles. The edges are their pairwise sums, x plus y, x plus z, and y plus z. And the sum of the three points, x plus y plus z, is the inside of the triangle. In designing our online erasure resilient mod, uh, tester, we design a two-player game that captures the main challenge in obtaining such a violating structure in the presence of erasure. We will describe the game in the next slide. The two-player game proceeds in rounds. In each round, player one, which we think of as the tester, can either draw a vertex or draw an edge connecting two vertices or color the inside of a triangle in blue. Player two has T moves, and we think of player two as the adversary. In each move, it draws an edge between existing vertices or colors the inside of a triangle in red. Once something has been drawn or colored in red, it cannot be colored or drawn over in blue. Our question is whether player one can draw all parts of one triangle, that is its vertices, edges, and color the inside in blue. We answer this question in positive by designing a winning strategy for player one with t to the order of t moves. The strategy is then converted into our online erasure resilient quadraticity tester. We will demonstrate one part of this winning strategy for the case when t is equal to 1. Suppose that player 1 has managed to draw the following two structures in blue, consisting of vertices and edges. Notice that some of the vertices are labeled with x and some of them are labeled with y meaning that they are potential candidates for the x and y vertices of the final triangle to be completed. Next, player 1 draws vertex z. Now the adversary can erase an edge between z and either y1 or y2. Suppose the adversary erases an edge between z and y2. Then player 1 draws an edge between z and y1 in blue. Similarly, the adversary can erase an edge between z and either y1 or y12. Suppose the former happens. Then player 1 draws an edge between z and y12. Next, the adversary can erase the edge between z and x2, and player 1 draws the edge between z and x1. There are now two potential triangles to be completed, the one between z, y1, and x1, and the other between z, x1, and y12. The adversary can erase only one of them. Suppose it erases this one. Then player one colors the remaining triangle blue, thus winning the game. To go from this game to the tester, there are a few other challenges to overcome. First, we need to analyze the probability that the queries made by the tester are non-erased when queries, because unlike in the game, the tester cannot see the erasures made by the adversary. Secondly, the tester does not just want to catch a completed triangle, but it needs to catch one that violates quadraticity. Thus, we need to analyze the probability that the completed triangle is violating. That concludes our discussion on quadraticity, and now we move on to our final result on impossibility of testing sortedness. We represent an array via an integer valued function whose domain are the indices 1 through n. The array is sorted is if f of x is at most f of y for indices x less than y. There is a long line of work on sortedness testing. Its query complexity has been pinned down to log of epsilon n over epsilon. It is also possible to test sortedness with square root of n over epsilon uniform IAD queries. 
In the model of offline erasures introduced by Dixit et al., sortedness can be tested with log n over epsilon queries. We show that in our model of online erasures, sortedness is impossible to test, even for t equals to 1. In particular, this shows that if a property can be tested with only uniform IID queries in the standard model, it does not imply that it is testable in the online erasures model. To see why sortedness is impossible to test, consider the following array where adjacent values are inverted and its values look like 2, 1, 4, 3, 6, 5, and so on. Every value participates in only one violation to sortedness. For example, 4 participates in a violation with 3, but if we look at 4 and any other value in the array, we would not see a violation. Thus, if the tester were to query 4, the adversary can erase the adjacent value 3, and so on. The tester will never be able to see a violation. Notice that this array is half far from sorted, since a value in each violated pair has to be modified to make it sorted. Even though it's far from sorted, all the violations to sortedness are disjoint, which is what makes this example impossible to test. On the other hand, for properties like linearity and quadraticity, which are testable in our model, whenever a function is far from that property, the violations have a lot of overlap with each other. That is, each point participating in a violation, on average, participates in a lot of other violations. So that concludes the presentation on our results. To summarize, in this work, we designed efficient testers for several important properties, that is, linearity and quadraticity. We showed tight bounds for testing linearity in terms of the erasure budget T, and we showed that some basic properties cannot be tested in our model, even for T equals to 1. The following are some open questions. First, is it possible to test in our model whether a function is a polynomial of degree at most k for any k greater than 3? In the standard model, this is possible with 2 to the k over epsilon queries. Additionally, what is the query complexity for testing quadraticity in terms of erasure budget t? The current tester has query complexity that is doubly exponential in t, which most likely is not optimal. Sortiness is a property that can be tested in the offline erasures model, but not in the online erasures model. Is there a property for which the opposite holds, that is, it has smaller query complexity in the online model than in the offline model? The two models are not directly comparable, since erasures are budgeted differently. Finally, what are other sublinear tasks that can be studied in our online erasures model? Thank you for listening, and please get in touch for any questions.